I'm Myra Ferguson, and I'm here with Erica Gamut, who you all know already. And we are both with N5, and we do technical support and create learning content so that you can learn how to use N5 better. So this is what N5 is. Um, N5 is... if you if you haven't used it before, N5 is a plugin for InDesign that lets you export HTML5 from your InDesign layout. Um, and there, the thing is, is that it's it's not just converting HTML, uh, converting your layout to HTML5. It's allowing you to create interactivity in various formats. Um, it's extensible so you can add your own code if you want to like if you do want to do that but if you don't know code at all and and you are just like I just know how to use InDesign and I can make print stuff this will help you to transition from print to um, creating things for the web um, there's a video here on the website you guys can take a look at it's probably not going to play very well online so I'll let you guys go to ajarproductions.com when you want to take a look at that um, I also wanted to show you um, this is a little bit about us. This is uh, Justin Putney. He is the owner of Jar Productions and the creator of N5. And then um, this is us. We are a very small team. Um, there, There's um, Caitlin who does sales. And then there's Erica and I who do um, technical support and, and create the learning content. So if you have questions and you send them to us, we will probably be the ones who answer you. <laughs> um, so uh, I understand that you know how to use um, in design. So what N5 is going to let you do is take your print layout and convert it to HTML5. But it's not just that conversion, like I was saying, it is um, that you can take the interactive tools within InDesign and still be able to use those in your uh, interactive documents, but you don't know, you don't have to know how to code to make that happen. So let me give you an example. Um, and here is a sample document that was created with N5. Um, and so this is like an example for uh, a medical app. So maybe think of it kind of like maybe it could be a magazine, it could be a brochure, um, but it has some different features in it. Let me refresh it so you can see when it first starts up, there's a little animation up here in the upper left. And then there's the uh, there are um, all the different articles or pages um, that you can see when I hover over them. It's got uh, a little finger that shows that it's interactive. So if I click on it, it will take me to that page. So on this page, there's obviously um, text content, but there's also, if you notice on the right side, I can scroll through some of this content. So it's actually longer than the, the size of the page. Um, the scroll bar, I can uh, I can use this, the mouse wheel or I can um, use uh, the mouse itself to drag the scroll bar to go up and down. Um, and then I also have these buttons for navigation that I can use on the side. So I'm gonna click to the next one. On this page, there's a video. So you can include video in your content. If I play it, it starts to play. I can click on it again, um, make it stop. There's various customizations I can do um, with video. So I can make it scale in certain ways. I can make it have uh, the button that shows like that, or I can have um, the actual um, uh, controller down at the bottom. Um, so it's very versatile. Let me go to the next page. On this page, you can see there's an animation that plays as soon as the page loads. If I wanted to see that again, I could click a button that then makes the animation play. And here's another animation. This one's a little fancier. It's got multiple animations happening at the same time. And if you notice down here, there's also a URL. If I click that, it will open up that particular page. Okay, let's go to the next page. On this page, you can see a few things happening. There's some animation, and then I get this uh, card with some information about the doctors. Now, if I hover over them, you can see that the, the finger shows that there's interactivity. I can click uh, on a different doctor and get uh, information about each of them. And each time uh, the a new card loads, you can see there's an animation on it as well. Um, could I just ask, ask if yeah. that was done with object states in InDesign? It absolutely was. Does everybody remember <laughs> object states I showed you? That was done with object states. Yeah. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this document and then I'm going to show you how it was put together. Thank so, you. Yeah. So um, 
Then I'm gonna click on the next one. You can see here are these different cards. If I click on these cards, then they flip. So now that's a nice little option. I can flip them back if I want. And then I'm gonna go to this next page where there's a little animation that's happening with these images. It just auto plays and it's swapping between these different people. And on this page, I could have some contact information. So if I click on a button, it's gonna open up this pop-up. I can close the pop-up. I can click on another one. It's gonna show that particular information. Pharmacy has its own pop-up as well. And then when I click over here, this, this page, it's very similar, but it's it could be something that's user guided. So if I clicked on this red pill, then I get this information with a state that has particular information. Um, if I click on the next step, notice this is a little different. There's an, um, an alert that pops up. So that's a little special. I'll show you the trick behind that one in just a bit. Um, I can reset it, which takes me back to the original state. Click the next one. This one also shows that there's something different happening here. So this is for that blue button. Okay, and then I can also reset it. If I go to this last page, um, notice there's this image here, but what's happening is I've got this 3D image and I wanna be able to interact with it. Well, you can see there's this little icon here where if it shows me I can move left and right. If I move left and right, notice what's happening. I can interact with this and I can um, move that 3D model. Okay, um, one other thing I wanna show you is I'm going to change the size of my browser window. So as I do that, notice what's happening here. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, um, there are um, some uh, social media uh, buttons that you can click. If I were to want to share this content on Twitter, I could click on it and it will show, um, this is a preview of what it would look like. Typically, a lot of them need to be uploaded before it will work properly, but this gives you a preview of what that social media post would look like. And then as I scroll, um, scale the browser, you can see the content is scaling. And not only is it scaling, once I get to a certain point, it switches. So now I have- It's not showing, it's, it's not, not, it's not, doing it's not it. showing it, yeah. Oh, well, uh, are you seeing the, are you, what, what, are you seeing the page still? Yeah, are you flipbook. just, yeah, did you just share, just share your browser? Cause I'm wondering oh, if it's not, uh, oh, maybe you that's have to it. show your whole computer for it to- Let me see if it's letting me see. Share there. Now do you see it? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So here's the document the whole at the whole at the size that it was. As I um, scale it down, you can see that it's um it changes. So here's this horizontal layout, and now I have this vertical layout. It's responsive. It's responsive, exactly. So Remember then I responsive design. We talked about that. Yeah. So this changes. Uh, you can see as I go back through the pages, um, this is actually a separate layout. Um, so you can see here it's more of a vertical layout. Like here, if I click on the cards, these are actually flipping in a different direction. And this is actually completely different configuration. Still works the same. It's just made for a vertical layout. So that would be like, if I wanted to put this on uh, an iPad, um, then I could have it. So in one orientation, it would use the the first layout. And then if I were doing uh, this orientation, then it would show this one. And so it still keeps going through. Well, let me show you how all of this is put together. So I'm gonna stop sharing this screen and I will share InDesign. Let's see, here we go. Um, there we go. Okay. Do you see? Yes. You see my screen? Okay. So this is the InDesign document. And and this is this is one, this is sort of like a beginning state of it. So if I were going to put all of this together, you can see some of the parts are already uh, assembled, but I'm going to show you how some of these other parts are put together. Uh, some of these are already sort of set up. So this one, you can see it's got an animation. If I go to the animation panel, so if you're, if you're not familiar with where all these panels are, you can go to window interactive and you can see all of these panels are here. Um, what I do is I've set up my own workspace that includes all of them so I can access them pretty quickly. So here's animation. You can see that this, um, this animation is set up to, for on page load, which is the default for the preset to fly in from left. Uh, now remember that um, all the links to the beginning um, content, 
this is a little bit um, different trick. This is, um, if you notice on each of the pages, they have um, a header. And if I go to the paragraph styles, they all have this section title uh, paragraph style. So if I select this box where I want it to be applied, and there's an inset on here um, set already, uh, I can go to layout and table of contents. And you can see over here, if I set the title to in this issue and make the paragraph style include that section title to create a table of contents um, and then set the style that I want it to, to become. I can set the options so that it creates these PDF bookmarks. Um, and if I were replacing one, that's okay. Uh, when I click it, it's going to create this table of contents for me. And when it does, it's making all of those links for each of these um, section headers from the other pages. Because it was based on the paragraph style. Yes, that magic That's paragraph how it style. did it. It has separate paragraph style. Yep, so those paragraph styles are helpful. If I come down to this next page, you can see that the scrolling frame um, is, it was made out of this content that's longer than this other frame. So with scrolling frames, scrolling frames is actually a separate uh, extension that you can add. Um, you can download it um, either through the Ajar Productions website or um, when you come up to N5 Interactive Widgets and Scrolling Frames. Um, to make this work, I have this content that's longer than the text frame. I'll copy it. So Command C, or I can go to Edit and Copy. Uh, actually, I'll cut it. So um, Command X, Control X uh, on Windows. Uh, and I'll select the text frame, and then I'm going to right click and select paste into. So I'm actually pasting that content into that text frame. Once it's set into that text frame, I'll select that, uh, that text frame that is containing the other text. I'll go to N5, Interactive Widgets, Scrolling Frames, and then I'll set it the direction I want. This one will be vertical, and now my scrolling frames are set. All right, so the next one, here's where I'm gonna put that um, uh, video. I'm just gonna place the video. I can um, embed a YouTube video if I want to, but I'm gonna go to file and place. I'll navigate to where that uh, MP4 file is. Um, it will load onto my cursor and then I'll uh, place it where I want it. It's already sized to the size that I want. Um, so that uh, that's really the best way to place your, your, your videos into your content. Uh, if it's larger, you can scale it, but it's still gonna load that full video. So I recommend making sure that you edit your video down to the size that you want. Um, you can also go to N5 Interactive Widgets to the video widget and to set other options. If you wanted it to autoplay, you can. Be aware um, on some content, if it's the first page that's loading, you may also need to select um, mute because that's the workaround for some of the browsers that restrict autoplaying content. Um, and then you can also change the frame fitting if you like or the controller skin. Here, I might just want the big button that we saw earlier. Um, oh, and here's another trick too. Um, I'll just mention, if you have a video, you can add an end action. So if you wanted it to automatically go to the next page, or if you had a multi-state object, you could have it go to a different state. So that's a kind of little fun interactive trick you can use. Um, so the next page, this is the uh, animation page where um, I'm going to select all of these check marks and I'll go to... Um, the animation panel, and I'm going to set it to fade in, and that's gonna apply it to each of them separately. Um, and um, so here's check one, check two, and check three. And then on this button, so this is right now is just a shape. I'm gonna turn it into a button by going to the buttons and forms panel. I'll select the type, I'll go to button, and then I'm gonna need to add uh, uh, an event, which by default is the on release or tap, I'll leave it like that. And I'll add an action that is going to play the animation. So I'll select animation. Um, I'll need it to do all three of these. So I'll have check one, animation, I'll make it play check two, and then I'll do animation and I'll make it do check three. So um, just make sure that you, you know, you check all of the ones that you want to play at the same time. And just a note, some people ask this, you can have more than one action on a button, um, which uh, sometimes people forget that they have that option. 
Okay, so that's our animation setup. This one is already uh, set up. I left it like this. You can see this one has um, each of these shapes has this one has a fly in from left animation. This one has a fly in from right. The bar in between has a fade in animation. And then you can see that um, this one, that green line is what shows the path of this particular animation and same with this one. So you can set these up um, you know, however you want your animation. And then remember that uh, URL, here's that URL right here. Um, what I can do for this one is I'll go to the hyperlinks panel. I'm gonna copy this URL. I'm gonna um, click to create a new hyperlink and it's gonna paste in that URL uh, here. I can change the style if I want to. I'm gonna leave it as the same style as what it currently is and click okay. And so now when that gets clicked, it will go to the YouTube page. Okay, so this one is the one that's a little bit more involved. This is our, um, these are our buttons and our multi-state object. Now it's not quite set up yet as a multi-state object. Let's go over to the layers panel and I'll show you what we've got. Um, first I've got, um, these are, you can see, um, this is just a frame right now. And you can see that these are all these rectangles. So these are actually uh, what we consider, um, what we'll make into, um, invisible buttons. So they're just a shape that has no fill and no stroke, and they'll go on top of the content and become the buttons. So let's, I'm going to select all of these. I'm shift selecting all of them, and I'm going to go to the buttons and forms panel. I'm going to make all of those buttons and let's hide those just for a moment. And you can also see that these um, images already have an animation applied to them. So if you look over here, they're uh, in the animation panel, they are set to fade in. Okay, so these right now, these are groups. So these are these doc one, doc two, doc three. If I open one of these up, you can see that it contains uh, an image that has an animation applied to it. That's this flying from right. This next one is the content uh, for the, the text, and then you can see the shape. So that's in a group. Um, and then I've got all of those set up as different groups. If I marquee select them, so that's just drawing a box over um, the, the group so that it selects all of them, I'm gonna create that multi-state object by going to the object states panel. While they're selected, I'll come down here to where it says convert selection to multi-state object and create the multi-state object. Okay, so remember the buttons that we made? Let me show those again. I'll turn them on and I'm gonna select a button I'll come over to the buttons and forms panel. And so this button, I'm gonna add um, a go to state action. And then I need to make sure that it's the correct state. And I'm going to select uh, doc one for it. I'll select the second one, do the same thing. Um, this is gonna be a go to state action. It'll be doc two. And same with this one, uh, let's go to state. And I will make this doc three. And this one will be go to state, that'll be doc four. And the last one, go to state five. So now that one's all hooked up. Okay, and then let's see, here's this last, uh, not quite the last one. The next one is, um, if you notice, if I select each of these, I'm gonna go to the object states panel and you can see that these are already set up as multi-state objects. So they have two states. They have the first state, which is a group that contains the text, the image, um, and the other icon. Um, and then state two has more information about um, that particular doctor. And if I hover or if I click on any of the other ones, you can see they also are made up of the two same states. So the difference here is that I'm going to apply what's known as um, the N5 interactive widget, which is the 3D flip card. So by default, it's gonna be set to none. To make it work, I'm going to select horizontally. So I can select the direction. That's how on this one, it was set to horizontal and the other one was set to vertical. So I'll just select um, these and make them all horizontal. Okay. So this next one also uses multi-state objects. So if I select uh, the, one of them and go to the object states panel, you can see that it goes between these different states that contain different images of different doctors. Um, and so what I want them to do is to play um, automatically when they go to the page. And so I'll select one of these, I'll go to N5 interactive widgets, 
and I'm going to go to um, the slideshow. And the slideshow is for specifically for multi-state objects. So I can turn off this swiping to change because I don't want it to swipe. I just want it to auto play. It's going to be by default set to crossfade so that it's going to have that animation that happens between each object state. So it's just going to play those. So I can just select all of these and set them to um, the same where it's auto playing and not swiping. And let's see, here's this one. Okay, this one again um, is another setup using multi-state objects. Now you can create pop-ups a few different ways. Pop-ups are basically buttons and multi-state objects. If you're not familiar with how to set up a multi-state object or if you wanna create a different type of pop-up, you can go to N5 and use um, the build wizards and use the pop-up builder, which will create a multi-state object for you. Uh, so here, I'm going to show you, this is the multi-state object, but this is going to be a little bit of a trick because this multi-state object is uh, created um, with these different states and not with uh, the pop-up builder. The pop-up builder will uh, add a special state for you, which is that initial state where it doesn't show. If you create it yourself, what you can do it with N5 is to go to the object states panel menu. That's this um, hamburger menu in the upper right. And I'm gonna click add empty state. And that's gonna place this empty state at the top. And you'll notice it's not exactly empty. There's a little uh, shape here. And if I select it, you can see that, let's see if I can select it. You can see that it's just another shape that's um, it's invisible. Uh, sort of invisible. It's a shape that has no fill and no stroke. Um, so it will actually occupy a space on the state, but it makes it so that it's empty. So the first thing that we see is actually the buttons. Now, this is all um, on this contact info layer. And above that are the buttons. Now, that's important because in order to be able to access the buttons, the buttons have to be on top. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, select a button. And I'm going to go to um, the buttons and forms panel. I'll select uh, actions to add a new action. And here's where I'm gonna go to state. This one will be the contact info. This one will be for urgent care. This next one, uh, let's see, the second button. Um, I'm going to make sure that this one goes to uh, billing. And then this next one, making sure I'm selecting on the button itself. This button is going to go to pharmacy. So now those are all set up. Um, and oh, let me show you one more thing. If I go back into the multi-state object and select inside there, you can see that close button. Notice what it does. It, um, it is a button that goes to state and now I'm gonna set it to go to empty. And I would need to go through each of these um, to make sure that when I close it, it's it's to make it appear like it's closing, um, it's going to go back to um, the uh, to that empty state. And one more. There's pharmacy. And so you need to make sure that you're doing it for each of the buttons um, because they exist in that group. Uh, on that uh, on each separate object state so that's when they they'll hide when you switch um, the object states okay so here's another one with object states this is why multi-state objects are so handy um, this one is uh, a little bit different in that each one of these uh, multi-state objects does contain its own uh, button so if i double click into it um, i can um, select the the button um, this one is going to go to the object state, to the red pill state. This one is going to go to the blue pill state. So let's take a look at what's set up in there. And there, let's see, there's the red pill. Here's that little trick that I was talking about. So if I select the, um, the button here, remember when we clicked on this button, it did something different. This one's going to a URL. And that URL is not actually... A location, this URL is a JavaScript alert. So that's how it's showing that little um, alert in the browser window. Um, so you can add a JavaScript alert here, and you can also do the same thing um, if you create a hyperlink. Instead of sending it to a URL, you can also put JavaScript in, um, in there as well. Okay, and let's go to this one. So this is the um, that 3D model rotation. So 
how this works is that it's taking um, 2D rendered images from the 3D model. So if you know 3D, um, when you uh, export your uh, 3D model, instead of making a movie out of it, it would be an image sequence. And that image sequence can be loaded into this box. So here I've got a frame. I'm going to go to N5. I'll go to Interactive Widgets. And uh, I'm going to go to Image Sequence. And then I get this image sequence dialog. This image directory is where I'm going to navigate to uh, where those images for this 3D model uh, reside. So I'm going to click on the three dots and I'm going to navigate to where those are located. And there we go. And then you can see that that populates in, in that window. Now, if I go over to my pages, uh, you'll see that I just have the one layout. So if I want to make this responsive, I'm going to need to create that second layout. What I can do for that is I can use the N5 uh, build wizard for the magic layout builder. And here is where I will create uh, this iPad version. Now here you can see the width is the same, that's the same dimensions as this particular document, but I, if I want it to be the other orientation, I can swap it and then create it. Now the build, um, the magic layout uh, build wizard um, will create sort of the beginnings for you. So it kind of gets you a little closer, but you can see you, you would still need to want uh, to go back through and check to see um, does your content lay out the way you want to? And remember how there were some changes. Um, you can see how things aren't really exactly where you want. So you will need to go back through and make a little changes, but it, it does get you that head start. Uh, okay, one more thing I want to show you is, you remember this little button down here? Now, if I click it, you see it, I can't get to it. That's because it's on the parent page. So let's take a look at the parent page for this. Um, here we go. If I select this, um, this is what I want to use to click to get to um, all the rest of the content. And what I'm going to do is build a menu for this. So I'm going to go to N5 uh, Build Wizards, and I'm going to use the Menu Builder. Now, this Menu Builder, I have some different options. I'm going to make a compact uh, menu, which is just going to pop up whenever I want it. But I have other options where I can make a top door, or I'm sorry, a sliding door. Uh, menu, which would slide out from the side uh, back into the screen, or I can use this top bar, which would be like a top menu. Um, so I'm going to leave it at compact. It's going to be based on either I could do it as bookmarks or on a paragraph style. Again, this is where your paragraph styles can be very handy. So I'm going to use the section title, and then I'm going to create build it. Uh, and then it's going to build it for me. So you can see what it's doing here. Let's go to the object states panel. It is creating an object state. So here I have this closed version. Typically I would click on that button to open it. Um, this is a little bit more custom. Um, here's the menu itself. I'm gonna move this whole menu over down here so that it goes with the button that I wanna use. And I'll just click into, um, uh, into here to, um, Let's just get rid of the button that I don't need. And we'll go back into this button here. And I'm just gonna click out these. I still wanna have like a something in there so that it holds it, but I don't need to actually have that in there. I can just um, delete so, so you don't see it. And that's how I can add the, um, the menu. I'll make this button um, so that it goes to state, goes to the compact menu and we'll open it, um, or actually let's do, uh, instead of that, let me get rid of this one. And then instead I'm gonna do, let's do next state. So anytime it clicks on it, it's just gonna toggle it. Um, and so that'll open the compact menu. Okay, so those are all the different parts to um, the different pages of the interactivity that was created in the document. Next thing I would do is I would export it. Now there's a couple of different ways that I can export it. I can go to N5 Easy Export Wizard, uh, and I have to save it, so let's save this. Um, and then when I do, it brings up this dialog that lets me pick from different options. Now, all of these, like say if I wanted to do um, this modern digital, I could click it 
hit go to next. By default, it's gonna to set to this pixel perfect. You can choose editable text, which is an HTML text option. If I wanted to see what all the different options were um, for the, these particular settings, I could click on advanced and see this export HTML5 within five dialogue. Let me cancel this real quick too. So if I go up here, I also could just go directly to export HTML5 within five. And then I can set my own content. Um, it's, uh, the, the easy export wizard is like a preset, um, that also has like, um, preset, um, settings for all of these, but I could change things. Like, for example, if I don't want those back next arrows, I could move, I could get rid of those. I could go into who, um, uh, advanced and I could change the desktop scaling resources is where I could, um, add CSS or JavaScript if I wanted to change how something worked. Uh, and I could change really pretty much anything in here if I wanted to. So when I have everything set the way I want, I could click OK and export it. And I didn't go back and change the um, what the other um, uh, layout looked like, but it would go ahead and export for me. So I'm going to let this just go ahead and export. But I want to show you a little bit more from this other page, let me share. Um, let me go back to Chrome. Okay, do you see? Do you see Chrome? Yes. Okay, it's awesome. Starting to screen. Yeah, there it is. Okay, all right. So here is. Um, a document that shows a little bit about those different options. So you remember in the Easy Export Wizard, you could um, create a flipbook. Here is where you can see um, this is what the this is an embedded sample document. So if I click on it, you can see this is how the flipbook will export with these particular settings. If I click through here, you can see these were the settings on here. Um, these are the equivalent settings in the export HTML5 within five um, dialog. Uh, this bottom part here. It wasn't in the other document, but this is the um, the viewer display, and it gives you options where you can go to a table of contents. You can click on thumbnails. Thumbnails allow you to click to navigate to a particular page. You can zoom in. Uh, you can zoom out. You can go full screen. Um, you can go back. Um, and so that's, that's the flipbook and the viewer display. Here's the modern digital version. It's similar, but it, it uses a slider uh, fade in type of document and includes the viewer display. Long form ebook is a little different in that um, all of the uh, of the other two um, that I showed you use a different type of output where it's one index.html document. And this one will reload each time. You can see how it's loading because it's a separate page. Each one of these would be numbered pages. Um, this one is an app. This one's unpackaged. Uh, this is where um, you could create a mobile app and package it so that you could actually uh, sell it on an, on the App Store or on Google Play. That's a little bit more involved. There is more information about how to do that on um, the Ajar Productions website. A web app is another way that you can create an app. Um, what it does is it looks for, um, it's it's doing de device detection right now because it's going to run on your mobile device. You can make it look like it's functioning like a native app. Uh, so you can install um, it to the home page, And so it will show the icon and you can launch that app from the home page. It can also be set to uh, work offline. So that's another uh, option through the web app. A one page site, you can see it looks a little different. The site um, is, uh, it's you can see how it's wider than the other one. So it's filling it through the width. And here is landing page and microsite are very similar. You can see that, um, they are also using that um, uh, fade, uh, slider fade um, type of page format. Here's a scrolling doc, and you can see there's a little bit of space in between each of those pages. And I'm just scrolling with the scroll wheel. Banner ad, typically this wouldn't necessarily be uh, multi multiple pages, but you can see what that would look like as well. There's also the option to do presentations. So if you're creating print content that you might want to use as a, a presentation, you could use this presentation export. Um, there's another option in in five, which is the presentation mode, which allows you to autoplay. So if you wanted to set something up for like a kiosk, if you're presenting at a, um, you know, um, like a conference or, you know, 
presenting other content that you would want to autoplay, that's another way that you could create that. Okay, so I've presented a lot of information. It could be a little overwhelming. <laughs> um, and what I want to tell you is that we provide so much information on the website. So when it comes time to like you're creating something and you're like, how did she do that thing? You can come to, there's, a, here's some different resources. Here's the YouTube page. <clears throat> this is where you can find all kinds of information about how to create different um, types of setup. So here's pop-up ads, um, how you do something like wedding invitations. Maybe if you want to add backgrounds, lots of information here. Here's some examples to give you some inspiration of what things that you can do. Here's some different information um, on um, publishing a digital magazine. Here's some uh, excerpts from the Ajar Academy, which is premium content that you can purchase if you want um, specialized training for particular um, topics. Uh, and then there's some popular videos and webinars that we've done. Um, also on the website, if you go to jarproductions.com, you will find this becoming a digital publishing master with N5. And it includes all kinds of information, including how to get started by installing N5. You can see over here, these are the different lessons. Um, you can see there's a tour document that comes with N5 that opens up the first time you install it. There's uh, information about doing text rendering, video, all the different things um, that you can create interactive um, uh, to make interactive with your content using N5. And then if you're like not sure about how to do something a little special, maybe there's something like code you want to add, you can click on, um, if you go to the uh, N5 support, that's if you just go to the Ajar Production site and go to this all support options, you'll get this N5 support resources where you can just do a search for um, a particular topic and it will search through all of our help documentation, videos, knowledge base, all of these different sources to help you find the content that you're looking for. If you would like to try N5 out, if you haven't already, I would recommend going to the Ajar production site and going to the um, downloads page. This is where you can go to get, go to download update N5. <clears throat> and this is where you'll find uh, this link that you can click to download it. When you download it, you don't have to purchase it. This is just a free trial. It is not time limited, but there are features that are limited. So um, just be aware that um, pro level features, you're, pro you're not gonna be able to test, um, but you can get an idea of what the different document types are like and how it functions um, to, to go ahead and play around with it and then um, see what you can create with it. Okay, so let me know, what questions do you guys have? Well, since everybody's so shy, <laughs> Uh, I'll start with a few questions. Okay. Um, number one, when it is exporting the interactivity, is it writing the in JavaScript? Yes. So um, HTML5, that's a great question, by the way. HTML5 is a combination of a few things. It's your HTML page. So it's going to create an index.html page. Uh, if you That's if you export with the output being web. If you make it um, multi-page web, it'll be that index.html5 or index.html page with um, numbered pages. So like uh, 001.html. Then it includes an assets folder. And that assets folder includes um, a CSS folder. And the CSS is what will uh, make your page appear the way that you um, wanted it to appear. It will also include a JavaScript folder, which includes how, like all the code that makes it function. So that's going to be everything from how like the, um, the page turn happens in, um, in, uh, in the flip book or just how various things are set up. Um, it will also include an, an images uh, folder. So that's going to be all, all the images that you've placed in there. If you set your text to um, export as images, your, your text will be as images in that folder as well. If you have video or audio, that will go in a media folder. Um, and then if you um, want to use the viewer display and add a PDF that you can um, make download, like it can be downloadable, you can have N5 generate the PDF for you, um, or you can add your own PDF that would be available through the viewer display. And both of those would be in a, a 
um, downloads folder. And all of those other folders are included inside that assets folder. So you really is want- Is there a way we can see a project folder that's been yeah. exported? Yeah, that yeah. would be really great for everybody, right? Okay, let's yeah, see. Everybody's going, yeah. We yes. want to see what it looks like. Okay, so let me- We know me... what an InDesign file looks like, and we know what a PDF looks like. We okay. know what a fixed EPUB looks like. Okay. We don't let's... know what your export looks like. Okay, so here, um, let me share my screen. Thank you. Um, let's see, which screen is that? Screen, screen two. DC. Okay. Do you see my folder? I don't see a screen. You're not sharing. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, share. Do you now see? you're sharing. Okay. Do you now. see? Okay. Okay. So here's like, here's the output. So you'll, it will by default create a folder that's called HTML5 output. It will include, and so this is that um, document that I showed you earlier. It's the, the index. The, the, yes. That's the home page, no matter what file right. you make ever. Whatever site you do in the world, that's always your homepage, index.html. Right. So by default, what happens is the browser is going to be looking for an index.html page. So um, if you do a multi-page web output that has like a 0001.html page, it's going to tell it that's your first page, and then it'll navigate to the other HTML pages. What it's doing when it's just the index um that HTML page is it's going to different parts within that one um, HTML document. So let me open up the assets folder so you can see what's in here. So this one includes the CSS. Which is so the styling. That's the styling. So the there's, styling. there's styling that's for the pages specifically. That's going to be like your text part. There's the styling that's on the, uh, the um, video. There's the styling that is for the actually the actual output. And let me go back into the assets folder. Here's the images. So these are all of the images that were generated from that particular document. Um, there are some different things that you can do for your images to make your content load faster. So you can set it to a standard um, image quality, or you can set it to high definition. So if you're targeting higher, like higher um, definition devices, you can use that. You can also export um, using object export settings so that you can even make it higher. So if you've made like a tiny sort of a smaller um, document and you know it's going to be seen on larger screens, instead of redoing the whole document, you could just set it so that the images uh, export at a higher resolution. Um, something else you can do if you get a gold level subscription, so the different levels of, sub of subscriptions give you different features, um, is that um, if you have multiple um, uh, alternate layouts, it can look for um, duplicate images so that if there's a duplicate, it uses, uh, it references the same image so that it makes it load faster. Uh, let's see what else I can so do. My second question is, as your first page is called index.html, yes. if you have an existing website and you yeah. want to add that index, could you change the name and then FTP all of this up to your server? That's a good question. So we don't recommend that you change the names because it can break the, um, the links. links to the content. Exactly. But what, what I would recommend then is if you wanted to put this content up when you would upload it, I would upload starting instead of like uploading both of these files, the assets and the index.html file, you could upload the index, uh, or you, I'm sorry, you could upload the HTML5 output folder and you could call it something else. This one, it doesn't matter if you, if you remove the name and change it. It's just the contents within that page that you can, um, that need to be the same. So you could call this, you know, I don't know, particular category or, you know, and that's really media. important because since every website starts with index h.html, you can't have two that say that in the same website, right. but you might want to put this content onto your existing Wix site or anywhere else. You'd yes. rename that big folder and then you can do it. Yeah. So now there's a, a, a little bit of a caveat with some of the sites that are like website builders. So if you've got something like Wix or if you've got like Squarespace, um, they have a slightly different way that you upload your content. So instead of uploading it, so typically what I would say at this point, the next step would be upload your content. And there's different ways you can upload it. You can FTP it directly to your site. Um, if you use WordPress, we have an N5 
uh, WordPress plugin that lets you add um, an archive. So that would be these files zipped, and then you can upload it that way. There's another um, hosting service that we recommend because it's super easy. It's called um, uh, Tiny Host. And so it's T-I-I-N-Y uh, dot host. Um, and it works similar to um, WordPress and that it would use an archive, but you just kind of drag and drop it. It's so easy. Um, and then um, the other thing that you would do like with a site like um, with Wix or Squarespace would be to embed it. And so um, when you embed it, what's happening, and this is basically the same thing that's happening with WordPress, is that it's creating an iframe that you put that this content, this HTML and assets folder into um, well, you're uploading it and then you're taking uh, the source information. So the location of where that is uploaded and then you're embedding it into the, the site. Um, we have some information on the Ajar production site with a little bit more information about um, Squarespace because each of these have their own little tools that let you do this. So there's like, um, uh, I think it's called embed block or something like that. So you still need to upload it someplace and it, Squarespace may or may not let you upload it. Um, we do have another uh, article on our website that lets you, um, it has some information about hosting. Let me see if I can hosting. Um, so here are hosting options. If you look here, this um, this particular page has information on these two top two are information on how you would upload content. Um, here's how you would do it with um, WordPress, tiny host. Um, and then if you wanted to embed it, I would say if you're doing something like Wix and it's tricky, um, like it, I'm not sure if it lets you upload content directly. Um, you could host, like have it hosted with some free hosting. There's some options here. There's an article that shows you how to do it. Some of the file sharing services used to let you do it, but you kind of have to use a third party service to let you do it. Um, you the, the general principle is that you would upload it someplace and then create an iframe um, to embed the content on a site. But for like Wix or, or Squarespace, um, you would use their tool after uploading the content that then basically creates the iframe for you. Very nice. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, do you, here's a good question. Do you have a student rate? Um, so there isn't specifically a student rate, but there is a, um, there are discounts for um, it, if annual subscription. So there's a, there's a monthly subscription, which is the regular price. You can, um, set it to cancel after a month if you're if you're not going to use it after that but if you do the annual subscription for any of the plan levels you get 50 percent off so that's kind of a big deal <laughs> okay yeah all right does anybody else have any questions they want to ask you had a question yeah um about the uh the, why there's a watermark on the pdf when you export it Oh, okay. So if you're using the trial version, the trial will put watermarks on all of the content. So let me show you, there's this other page here. This is, um, here's, here's the limitations of demo mode. So this is where um, it's going to put that watermark on it. Um, here's where you, you know, you're limited to certain outputs like the flipbook page peel um, or live text rendering. So you can only do that for four pages and it won't let you do certain other features. So like some of the pro gold or elite features are, are going to be limited. What we recommend if you want to try those other features and not have the watermark is to do uh, a month long subscription and then cancel, set it to cancel at the end of the month. Okay. And um, with the... Um... With also with the demo, does it um like if I wanted to uh use GIFs or video, does it uh could I use the demo uh format or you know uh application for that or would I have to uh upgrade? So you should be able to test it with the demo. Okay. Yeah. And it will work. Let me say something about the um if you use an animated GIF, there is a little bit of a trick with it. You have to make sure that when you place it in InDesign, that it fits the frame. If right. the frame cuts, like if it crops the, the animated GIF, N5 will think that you want to um, have it have it like generate a still image that's based on that, you know, cropped version of it. 
Okay. So just make sure that it fits. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. That was good a good question. Yeah. Great. Because he's already been playing with it. Oh, fantastic. That's awesome. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? Guys, you must have questions. Well, tell me what you want to make. Guys, what do you want to make? How many of you want to turn your InDesign files into web pages? Or put them into your portfolio on a Wix site, like we talked about. I hear, I see. Nobody says a word. <laughs> head shake up and down, <laughs> but nobody says a word. Once they have the one month or two months that they pay for, all the content that they make still stays viable after they cancel the subscription. Right. Yeah. You, so, so where is so you, I can say or anybody can say any work they do onto their desktop. Right. So you remember how I was showing you that folder that had yes. the, the HTML5 output folder? Yes. That is on your hard drive. You and you have it forever. Take, you have it forever. You can upload it to your site. You can upload it to another site. You like you can even go in and uh, if you wanted to open it with Dreamweaver uh, or a text editor, you could actually go in and make modifications to the code itself. So if you're like, my subscription's ended and I want to just change this one line of text, you could do that. You just go into the HTML. So it goes into code pen, it goes into BB edit, it'll go into any of the code. Yeah. Or even simple text. But um, so when when you showed the um whole site, it only had one index. If you wanted right. that each page to be its own index file, yeah. would that be considered the long form? So that's uh so yeah, the long form ebook what that does that is a preset that will that uses an output setting so if you go to the that basic section of the html5 or the ex, the export with in5 um export html5 with in5 dialog um that setting is the multi-page web setting and that's the one i was talking about that it makes the index.html page and it makes like a 001.html right, right. it goes sequential right, right. but I would not recommend changing the name. Don't change the name of those documents. But it it's will kind of scary because a lot of times the SEO works by right. searching the name. Right. So the only name you'll have is on the file folder mm -hmm. and inside the actual document, but it won't be in any of the titles of the page. Right. So one of the things that you can do, though, um, when you export is that you can look at how you are setting um, there's some options that you can do for accessibility. So things like um, the alt text also the helps text. with SEO. So you can also split the lines of text that you can get more um, content actually into the SEO. Um, and there's uh, there's actually a whole accessibility course that Justin does that as accessibility and SEO because they kind of go together. Um, and and I so, believe we have that whole webinar on the YouTube channel, right? The SEO one. Um, I mean, not the SEO, the accessibility one. There's parts of it. Yeah. I don't know if it's all of it though. Um, and then there is also, um, there is another page too that um, talks about uh, accessibility so let me see if I can grab that. Um, here is... Can I can I just go back and clarify one thing? Yeah. Just really quick. on the sure. um, where we said we don't need the subscription again. You can make changes to it. But if you want to go back into the InDesign file and re-export from there, you do need to have an ac active subscription for that. Right. I just so you can make only sure. have that one version during your subscription, but if right. you can't go back and fix it. Right. Yeah. Can change it. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I understood it that way to begin with. And then when you were talking about like having your portfolio and putting on Wix and all that, Myra had mentioned that tiny host, that's a great place to put the portfolio so that you can go ahead and put that into the, uh, into your Wix, your Wix page for that as well. So that's a really low cost option to, to get that up there for a quick portfolio. So that would be your hosting server. Teeny host. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry, and you ahead, recommend it because, like, I I'm a host gator person. Everybody has somebody. Some people. Some people love GoDaddy. 
Yeah. I yeah. Mean, tiny host is good for simple sites. It's definitely not something you would build out like you would, you know, on your own hosting. It's just something for real quick and easy. We use it a lot for testing just because we want to throw up a site somewhere really quickly and not have to worry with anything. You just drag and drop that folder onto it and it's just there and we can test it to see if it's working. Okay. So I, I just want to talk a little bit um, about considerations and sizes when you design your InDesign document for responsive design. And are there any guidelines that, like, I know a lot of people say, oh, design 1028 by 760, 768, because that's like a great size for iPads, and it'll probably translate well for iPhone. So are there any um, recommend because you're responsive, by the way, that response, you didn't have to build the responsive uh, um, version, the responsive version was automatically generated by the program in my there's, mistaken? There's, there's two parts. So there's, well, there's actually a few different ways that you can make a responsive site. And we kind of refer to the um, two of the ways as more of like flexible layouts than responsive. So um, those would be using desktop scaling. So desktop scaling is a way, like when I was, um, when the site was actually mm -hmm. um, scaling down in the bra browser as I was changing the size of it, that's desktop scaling. There's some other options within desktop scaling. There's some that aren't actually desktop scaling. There's like zoom to page width, which is slightly different. So if you're using something for a mobile site, uh, I would recommend that because desktop scaling does disable pinch to zoom. And so that is within your um, IN5 widget selection. Right. So um, the desktop scaling is uh, an, an export option. So, oh, the export it, yeah. option. so if you go to the advanced section of the export HTML5 within five document or um, uh, dialogue, so that's that's where you'll change the desktop scaling. Okay, um, so are there any tips and tricks on sizing for design? So, um, well, let me let me go back just a, a minute. So there's another type of flexible layout you can do, which is um, liquid layout. So that um, that actually reflows the content within a page, um, but that's at like a hundred percent scale. So it you know there's some ways that you can combine these. So that then, liquid layout got five different kinds like in InDesign, rescale, resize, yes, you know, pin. Yeah, so it's using it's using those features from within InDesign. It um, is. It is. Yeah, oh, so it can be a little tricky, so um a little? it just yes, <laughs> yes, I would agree. So then there's the responsive layouts and responsive layouts use the alternate layout feature within InDesign. And there are some rules around responsive layouts that you need to know. So it has to have um, matching page counts. So you can't have like 13 pages in a spread uh, and then 26 pages, you know, on, uh, you know, uh, on the mobile side. You know, it has to be 26 and 26. Um, that's because in five looks to the page that uh, the corresponding page in order to know what to switch when this the size changes now some another consideration is that um responsive layouts know how to switch based on um, either orientation if there are two layouts and they are the same dimensions but one is rotated or it do it does it based on the width of the page so like what you were saying if you wanted to have something that was a desktop um in desktop dimensions, maybe you're doing that at a higher resolution, like, you know, 1920 by 1080, but then you're doing a tablet that's, that's smaller. And then you're doing a phone. So what it's going to look to is those widths. So, but if you're doing something that, you know, if you're using, um, uh, a, a layout targeting a phone that has a high resolution and it's actually larger than the tablet where you th might think that that's smaller because it seems like a smaller device. It's, it's actually looking at those, at the, at the dimensions to know when to switch the layouts. It's not looking at a type of device. If that, makes uh, sense. that that kind of makes sense because if anybody's opened up InDesign and picked a high definition mobile, you'd say, Oh, how come this, screen is so big to work on yeah when i'm only working for a mobile device yeah now and something else like you were asking about tips so when you're targeting dimensions for for mobile use the ui kit size so that's actually smaller 
than the actual resolution. Let me see if there's um there is an article that we have about this that um here. And let me share my page or my um, screen so you can see this. Um, okay. Do you see? Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So here's this uh, article on uh, pixel dimensions, and it does mention this is like a semi-universal size that you can use. But if you're looking at particular phones, here's their native resolution. And you can see that the UI kit size is actually in some cases quite a bit different. So I would recommend taking a look at that particular article if you're targeting something for mobile. Right. Does anybody have any other questions? This was amazing. I want to oh. thank you so much. Oh, that sounds Erica, great. It was thanks, Myra. Meeting you. Thanks, I, yes, thanks. Okay, thank you, Myra. Thanks, everybody. So Enjoy. All right. Okay. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Be sure to check out In5 at in5.us. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.